Hey boys and girls, it's great to see ya! Today we've got some awesome stuff planned. We're gonna be learning a new Bible verse, we're gonna sing a song, we're gonna hear a great Bible lesson, and have a fun time overall. We can't wait to have a great day with you. Oh, I forgot, I'll be right back. Some friends of mine wanted to have me over for lunch. I can't wait. Bye. Hey kids, I uh, have this song that wanted to sing with you guys. How great is our God and love this song and hope you guys enjoy singing it. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light Darkness tries to hide it trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me. How great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God name above all names. You're the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. All right. Hope you guys have a great kids class and talk to you soon. Hey, boys and girls. I'm so excited about learning this verse for today. Our verse is Zechariah 4.6. Ooh, before we start the verse, I just gotta tell ya, I just had the most amazing bacon cheeseburger today. It was delicious. Anyways, Zechariah 4.6. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. This is a great verse, and to help me say the verse, I've invited my friend. My name is Cheesy Godita Crunch. But for short, you can just call me Crunch. Hi, Crunch. It's great to have you. Thanks. All right. You ready to say this verse with me? I think so. All right. Here we go. Zechariah 4, 6. Not by, by might, might, nor by power, power but, but by my, my spirit, spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Hey, you did a pretty good job. Why don't why don't you say the verse with the first two lines, and I'll say the last two lines. Zechariah four six, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. It's a great verse. It talks about how it doesn't matter how strong we are, how small we are. All that matters is that we allow God to be in control of our lives. Want to say it one more time with me? Let's do it. All right. Zachariah 4.6 Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Great job, kids. We can't wait to see you next week. Bye-bye. Hey, kids. Good job on singing that song and memorizing that verse. We're going to continue our lesson series from Judges. Robert talked about uh, Jephthah last week, and now we're going to go into Samson. And Robert was talking about last week how the children of Israel were in this constant state of being in idolatry and serving other gods instead of staying true to God himself. 
And in this chapter, in chapter 13, it, it opens up saying, And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. The Philistines were already a people who were stuck in idolatry and they were just a wicked people. And God allowed them to be delivered into the hand of the Philistines for 40 years. And in chapter 13, we meet Manoah's wife. And it says that she was unable to have a son. But the, an angel of the Lord came to her and told her that she was going to have a son. And his name was going to be Samson. It says in Judges 13, 24. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew and the Lord blessed him. When the, when the angel of the Lord came to Samson's mother, he told her that he was going to be a Nazarite unto God. And what that meant was, when Samson was born, he was going to have to follow some special rules. One of those rules was, he was not allowed to cut his hair. When, and the other rule was, he was not to drink any wine, and then also he was not to touch anything that was dead. And Samson was was born for a purpose to deliver the Israelites out of the hands of the Philistines. And he was supposed to, he, he was to follow some special rules for his life. In Judges 14, we see that Samson makes a bad decision. It says in Judges 14, 1, And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in, uh, in Timnath and the daughters of the Philistines. So what, what happened was is Samson, he had all these abilities and he wanted, he wanted certain things, but he wanted them right now. And he wasn't patient, he was being selfish. And the bad thing about this was that when Samson went down to Timnath, which, is a, which was a, a town in the Philistines, he, he saw a woman there and he says that, he told his parents that he wants to marry her. And this was not for Samson's purpose because Samson's pur purpose was to deliver, deliver the Israelites from the hand of the Philistines. So it wouldn't make sense for him to marry a Philistine woman. In Judges chapter 15, or sorry, in Judges, in Judges 14, it, the story goes on. And Samson is on his way to Timnath and he sees a lion. A lion comes out and is about to attack him. But Samson's so strong, and it says in the Bible that the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. And Samson was able to take the lion and rip it in half. And that's how strong Samson was. But see, Samson used his strength for whatever he wanted. And whenever he came into it, whenever he faced a problem, we don't see in the Bible that he called upon God to help him with that problem. And he was able to kill that lion, and he left it there. And in Judges 14 and verse 12, it's not on the screen, but I'll read it. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth the riddle unto you, if you can, if you can certainly declare it to it, it me within the seven days of the feast and 30 changes of garments. And so Samson gives these men a, a riddle, a challenge. He gives them seven days to find out, to find out what the answer to this riddle is. So these men, they, they, they think about it and think about it and they can't, they really can't figure it out. So what they do is they go to the, they go to the woman that Samson wants to marry and they tell her, they tell her to get Samson to give that, her the answer so she can tell the men so they can get the riddle right and get the 30 changes of clothes from Samson. So finally they threatened her and they said, if you don't get the answer from Samson, we will burn your house down and your father's. So the woman, I mean, what is she going to do, right? So she gets, she goes to Samson and she asks him for the answer. And finally, Samson breaks down and he tells, he tells the woman and the woman tells the men. And the men go to Samson with the answer and Samson's really mad because he knows that, you know, he knows that they cheated. He knows that they went to the girl, they, they went to the woman that he wants to marry to get the answer. So basically what happened, since Samson didn't have 30 changes of clothes on him, he went to the town of he went to a town of the Philistines called Ashkelon. And he saw 30 men there and he slayed those men. And he took their clothes so he could give to those other guys. So Samson was being really selfish in this in the fact that he thought he, he thought he was gonna get these guys get, to get 30 free changes of clothes. 
But instead, he had to go to a village, kill 30 men, so he could pay that debt that he owed to those men. And in chapter 15, we see Samson's belief. Finally, Samson comes back from Timnath. So he was on his way back, and he saw that dead lion. And in the dead lion, there was honey and bees. And Samson reached into the dead lion, and he took of the honey and ate it. And he brought it back to his parents. And if you remember from earlier, one of the rules of Samson's life is that he was not to touch anything dead. So, but anyway, he ignores that rule and he touches the dead body to get the honey and he even takes them to his parents. So in chapter 15, Samson ends up returning and the, and his, and the woman that he, he planned to marry, her father thought he was never coming back. He spent all this money and everything on the, on the feast, so he decided to let his daughter marry someone else. And when Samson found out about that, he was really mad. So what he did is he found some he found some foxes and he lit their tails on fire, and he sent them into a, he sent them to the Philistines' crops, and burned all their crops down. And eventually, what happened was the Philistines finally find out that it was Samson. So what do they do? They they take the woman that he was gonna marry, and her father, and they kill them. And so after that, Samson goes into hiding in, into Judah. And there was 3,000 men that were looking for him. Thousands of men that were trying to find where Samson was. They ended up finding him. And Samson allowed himself to be arrested and to take, uh, taken in by the, the men. And how did Samson get to this place? It just seemed like all of a sudden his life kind of turned upside down. But that's what happens when uh, we use our selfish desires to get what we want and we don't know what the consequences of those actions are gonna be. And when Samson was in, when Samson was tied up by the rope, he was in a, and he was in a city called Lehi and they were shouting against him and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and the rope fell off, fell off of Samson's arms like as if they, dissolved and what Samson did was he found a jawbone of a donkey and he got he picked it up off the ground and he slew a thousand men he was able to kill just a, he was able to kill a thousand guys just by picking up a jawbone and what Samson did afterwards is what it was what was really interesting to me is after finding all those guys Samson was really thirsty and he finally he finally figured out who he had to call out to for some help. And then in this chapter, we finally see Samson calling out to God for help. And in, in verse 18 of chapter 15, it says, And he was sore of thirst, and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die of thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised? But Samson was asking God and crying out to him, if I'm the one who's supposed to deliver the Israelites out of the Philistines' hand, am I going to die right now? And what God did was a miracle in Samson's life. It says in verse 19, But God clave in hollow place that was in the jaw, and there came water thereout. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore he called the name, therefore Enoch, Enochara, which is the Lehi unto this day. So what God did for Samson, Samson called out to God and God worked a miracle in his life so Samson, Samson could get some water. And Samson, had, Samson had great potential and we'll see that the decisions that he made had a great effect on his life. And even as a kindergartner through a sixth grade, the decisions that you make now will have a great effect on your, in your future. So we should choose to serve God now and not later, because we don't know how much time we have to serve Him. I just want to challenge you with that, and thank you for listening.
Hey Clubhouse kids, great job listening to the lesson from Mr. Carlos. Uh, and he's going to be teaching for these next couple weeks, so Mama. stick with us. And if you're able to, be with us in person uh, in Clubhouse Kids here at Moses Lake Baptist Church. Uh, we've had our contest going on, and it's going to continue to go on for the next few weeks. Uh, and it's a close contest right now. The girls and the boys are really close. And uh, we had some people call in with their memory verse this last week that we're going to award some points to. Okay, so uh, the very first person to call in this week, it was like right at 12. 30 like immediately after I said you can call in uh, we had Micah call me and uh, and he, he recited his memory verse word for word and uh, so we're gonna give Micah double points for this week for the boys and so I'm gonna spin Weston's gonna help me out come on Weston ready It's blue. Blue gives you 500 points, Micah, and double that is a thousand. So great job, a thousand points for the boys. And then our next person to call in was Elizabeth. So here's for Elizabeth. Ready? And it's orange. Orange is 200 points. Good job, Elizabeth. And then our next person was Thomas. So here we go. I know. Good job. And blue, 500 points. Good job, Thomas. And the next person was Victoria. So here's for Victoria. And it's orange. Orange is 200 points. And then for the next person, we have the boys. Uh, got had Ezekiel call in. So here's for Ezekiel. And it is yellow, 400 points. You guys are getting a lot of points. Got my mic. Hold on a second. And then for our last person to call in was Silas. So Silas, good job reciting your memory verse. And this is your spin for the boys. Ready? You want to spin, Weston? Spin again. Ready? Ready, grab. And let go. Oh, we got to do it again. One more time. Ready? Set. Good job. And green gives you a 300 points. So awesome job. Awesome job on the contest for this week. And we are gonna continue this contest in the coming week as well. So you can help your team out by calling into our church phone number, which is 509-765-0872, and leave a voicemail or talk to the person that answers the phone and tell them the memory verse that we memorized in this lesson, and, uh, and then you'll get points for your team. And if you're somebody that maybe has never been to our clubhouse before, never been to Moses Lake Baptist Church, uh, and in our kids' ministry, you can still call in. If you can help out uh, your team, and uh, you're welcome to do so. We love having guests come and be a part of our church, and so you're welcome to do that if you want to. And uh, we'll, we'll be expecting some calls this week, and to help your team out. And I want to see double the amount of people that called in this week call in uh, in this coming week. So I uh, hope you're having a great time watching these videos, and you have a great week.